Let's get into this. We are on day 71 or 72 of the writer's strike. Uh, it's already been it's already been a long one. Now, of course, the studios, the AMPTP, uh, the AMPTP is the organized uh, representative of all the studios in negotiating. They have been busy also coming to deals with the Directors Guild of America, and they did. They successfully reached a deal with the Directors Guild. It, it's who knows whether they're going to get a deal with the Screen Actors Guild. We're going to find out. Apparently, that just went to mediation. So we're going to find out if they were able to come to a deal or not. But they have not even been talking to the WGA. <coughs> According to them, they are so far apart that they just don't even see any reason in talking to each other. Well, it looks like they may be playing beyond hardball because according to a new report and deadline, the studio strategy, according to this report, seems to be to starve the writers out and force them to take whatever deals on the table. Uh, this comes to us from the folks at deadline. I'm going to read a little bit, a bunch of it here, but it's all real thing. Now, Receiving positive feedback from Wall Street since the WGA went on strike May 2nd, Warner Brothers, Apple, Netflix, Amazon, Disney, Paramount, and others have become determined to break the WGA, as one studio exec blatantly put it. To do so, the studios in the, and the AMPTP, that's again the organization, that, that's their combined organization that represents them in collective bargaining, believe that by October... Most writers will be running out of money after five months on the picket lines and no work. Now, this is where it gets really serious. The end game is to allow things to drag on until union members start losing their apartments and losing their houses, a studio executive told Deadline. Acknowledging the cold as ice approach, several other sources reiterated the statement. One insider called it a cruel but necessary evil. I want to read the first part of that again because it's just stunning to me. The end game is to allow things to drag on until union members start losing their apartments and losing their houses. Here's the thing. I'm going to say this up front. All right. I'm going to say this up front and get it out of the way. Make no mistake. If the WGA, the Writers Guild, were in a position that they had lots of leeway and could drag this out really long and it would really start to hurt the studios. And the WGA had the option of doing that to really stick it to the studios and force the studios to accept a bad deal. Don't doubt for one second that's exactly what the WGA would do. As Robert Meyer Burnett often says, it ain't what you deserve, it's what you negotiate. Yes, sir. <laughs> and it's never been more true. So while it is... As the Deadline article put it, cold as ice, I'm just throwing out there, if you don't believe for a second that the WGA would do the exact same thing if the roles were reversed, you're crazy. They absolutely would. And I wouldn't really blame them. The job of the AMPTP and the job of the WGA as the two negotiating bodies in collective bargaining, their jobs are to get the best deal possible for their side. That's their job. That's what they're there to do. The studios believe, right or wrong, the studios believe that the things that the writers are asking for isn't tenable. They believe, or they would have us believe, that a number of things that the writers are asking for is simply not practical for them to be able to do. And there are things that the writers are refusing to budge on. And they may be right for refusing to budge on them. But, and so they're saying, no, no point even coming to the table. And now it's coming out, they're saying, you know what, the writers are the ones in the worst spot. We, the studios, are thinking, it hurts, it sucks, but we can hold out till Christmas if we needed to. We got banks of stored scripts that are already done. We have product in the pipeline already. I mean, it sucks, it's hurting, but we can hold out till December. The writers can't. They're going to start losing their apartments. They're going to start losing their homes. And at some point, the writers, they think, are going to start demanding that their union reach some sort of a deal, and they're going to reach a deal that doesn't come anywhere near what it was, the things they wanted. And look, this is the ugly side of the business, man. This is the ugly side of the business. I mean, but it's, it's all about when you go into negotiations, knowing the position you're in. And according to the article as well, they were pointing out that the AMPTP, the studios here, want to make an example of the WGA. 
They want to make an example to all the unions, whether it's IATSE, in the future, the Directors Guild, in the future, the Screen Actors Guild, the Writers Guild themselves, that in the future, that if you think going on strike is going to stick the screws to us, we're going to make sure the screws actually gets, get pinned on you because we'll drag it out. We'll let you strike. We'll let it drag out forever. So according to this report, one studio exec saying they're going to use it as a way to make an example out of them, and the writers are going to pay the price. And again, on as cold and as heartless as it sounds, if you're in the position that you've got that leverage, you're going to use it. And this could get really ugly, Rob. I mean, this could get real nasty. You know many people in the WGA. I do. We know people who are on the other side too. We know people in the studios and stuff like that, but this is getting, again, it's moved beyond the, this is serious to this is ugly. I mean, this is real, real ugly. We want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Masterclass. Guys, you know, as a small business owner, I am finding myself having to be in negotiations all the time, whether it's with new contractors, vendors, or even agencies that represent our company. Now, I don't like to go into these negotiations unarmed, so I found the perfect class on Masterclass, The Art of Negotiation by Chris Voss, a real-life former FBI lead hostage negotiator. Taking this class on Masterclass made me feel a lot more equipped and confident going into all these various negotiations I have to do on a regular basis. With Masterclass, you can learn from the best to become your best anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. An annual membership starts at just $10 a month, and you get unlimited access to every instructor, thousands of online lessons, exclusive content, insight, and much more. There are over 180 classes to pick from, everything from filmmaking with Martin Scorsese all the way to cooking with the great Gordon Ramsay. In Masterclass, you will find practical lessons that you can apply to your life and work. So guys, get unlimited access to every class. And right now, as a John Campy Show listener, you can get 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash campia. That's masterclass.com slash campia for 15% off an annual membership. Masterclass.com slash campia. You read this report. Uh, what do you make of this? Well, first of all, it's frustrating to see because at the studio executive level, most people haven't actually worked in production. Right. So they don't understand what it takes to do a good writer's room, to produce, to run a great set, and why these unions are important and what kind of work environments people are actually dealing with and what the Writers Guild is fighting for. So you have two sides that don't really understand each other at a fundamental level. The executives are trying to protect their bottom line. Totally understandable. But the problem is those same executives are profligate spending everywhere. $300 million for Indiana Jones, $350 million for Fast X, $300 million for six 40-minute 40 ep 40 episodes of Citadel that needed to be rewritten in all this. You have these this the studio side, they're losing tens of millions of dollars because from their side, they don't know how to make effective programming, whether it's movies or TV. And at the same time, because of that, then they want to save money. And I get where they're coming from. Like you said, it's going to be really ugly. They're not even talking to each other. Yeah, there's no negotiations going but on. But at the end of the day, someone's got to make this programming. And they, they, the studios have to sit down and go, huh, we're, we no longer know how to control budgets. We don't know how to control schedules. And these people, we're fighting against the very people that know how to make the sausage. And they've got to come to some kind of an agreement. Because at the end of the day, what are they gonna do, just not make anything? They think they're gonna get AI generated. I can't even write a, a, a YouTube video script with chat GPT without having to rewrite the whole thing. There's no way, they, it, it, the AI is not going to replace writers. So somebody's got to do something. And I don't think the studios, they think they can last, but they're gonna need to fill up their programming slate because they're gonna lose subscribers. They're not gonna have anything to put in the theaters. It's bad. I think that both sides need to sit down and start realizing this isn't for the next couple of years. It's how are we gonna move forward for the next 10 years, the next 20 years? Let's negotiate this so we can all move forward and create a great entertainment environment as more and more people have other things to do than watch content. I heard one of the big sticking points is actually Netflix itself. Because uh, on the grander scale, one of the big issues on the table for the WGA is, um, uh, why did I just freeze on the word of it? Uh, residuals. Yes. 
For those of you who don't know, residual is basically this. You write a show, you get paid for writing a show, but then you get paid more money in the future as the show is viewed and seen and all that kind of stuff. Residuals is a big, big, we did a story on, I can't remember the name of the writer, but we, we gave an example of this on the channel a while ago where this one writer who worked on this uh, network TV show got a residual check for like $4,800, something like that. And then she did an, a couple of episodes of a much more popular streaming show got a residual check for about a hundred bucks, right? And that's one of the big issues, but apparently Netflix is the big stickler in the AMPTP because Netflix does not want to have any part of serious residuals. They don't want to be paying residuals. My big problem, look, I've already said, I have no problem with the AMPTP saying, we are here to look after our best interests. And if we have leverage, we're going to use it. I get it. My big concern, if I was a co-member of the AMPTP, is the problem seems that what you are fighting for, you know, smaller to non-existent writer rooms, limited uh, contract times for the writers, the things you're fighting for are going to result in you having less quality product. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're fighting for quality product and you're trying to get it for as cheap as you can, great. But the things you're fighting for are going to create less quality product. And that's not good for business. That's not good for you. That's not good for the writers. I, I mean, that's the part that I think is a little bit concerning to me. Well, look at the Emmy Award nominations. They're, it's all driven by the quality of writing. Yes. We have 100%. the best quality of writing on these prestige shows. You know, we have auteurs, TV auteurs coming in, developing shows like Abbott Elementary. That show came from the heart. The creator of that, <coughs> Miss Button, she, she, her, her mother public public school teacher all that that came from the heart you don't get that you can't just go out and, and find that that's something that a genius writer or a genius showrunner brings you and the thing about netflix is i get it john as we talked about on this show a million times netflix their only revenue is their subscriptions they don't have an ad based tier and every single piece of programming that they produce has to be paid for by subscriptions and look some shows like a Stranger Things, become a big hit. But unless they drive subscriptions, how do you say where's the revenue coming? Yeah, exactly. And so Netflix is going to fight this tooth and nail because they don't have, I mean, they have a small ad-based model or something, but not enough to pay residuals on 10,000 shows. So they don't even have a play. Oh, how are they going to give residuals from where? Yeah, and look, I honestly think this is how this is going to end. I think this is how it's going to end. I think it's going to end with the writer's union because again, unfortunately, the reality is the studios have all the leverage here. This is gonna end with the writer's union going to have to say, we're gonna have to take what we can get, and on a couple of big issues, we're gonna have to punt until three years from now, and which is when they would go into negotiations again. We're gonna have to take some of these big important issues, and we're just gonna have to punt for three years and try to position ourselves to be in a much stronger position in three years or six years to really attack these issues again, because I, I, just, I just don't think the Writers Guild is going to get what they want right now. I also think with Netflix, Netflix doesn't have anything to give them. Yeah. I mean, what Netflix has to do is agree to things on the front end, give them bigger writer writers' rooms if they need them, give them more time, and pay them more up front, because they're never gonna, you're never going to get residuals from Netflix. Where's no. that money going to come from? Yeah, I agree, and, and I think that's what they should be aiming for right now. If you need the residual stuff issues, just to, you're just going to have to understand, I don't think you're going to get it this year. Try to punt, get back on it again a little bit later. Anyway, huge, huge issue, guys. And tomorrow we may be talking about an actor strike too. Or they may have a new deal. It's gone to mediation. We'll fight, figure that out. All right. Hey, guys, thanks for checking out our video. Did you know that we have a daily podcast, hour-long, every single day, Monday through Friday, that you can find on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice? Just search for The John Campius Show Podcast.